Uh, hello everyone. Uh, so let's see where we are in the account. Uh, I had three losing days. One was with a webinar. So this is where we currently stand. So I was up uh, uh, almost 2,000, dropped down uh, back almost to zero plus 400. And the next, so I lost one, two, three days and one, two, three, four days to make it back. Yeah, you see. Maybe it takes a lot more to make it back than to lose, yeah, as always. Right, so tomorrow we have the Fed meeting. Um, we do not expect anything. Uh... So the markets every day have been range trading. Um, they don't provide the clear direction. And if you have an opinion that the market's going to go somewhere, the market's going to go the other way, as always. So no opinions, just uh, what's what the market is doing now. The Nasdaq stopped at 16 and 10 and a half, 10 and a half is let's see the daily uh well, it doesn't show the So 10 and a half, as you can see here on the higher, yeah? it's this high here, yeah? so 1050, 1050. This is tracing to 1050. Now let's look at the daily S&P. Uh, it's very difficult for the downtrend until now, but again, the volumes have been very low. Uh, nothing much has been trading. That's the new phase of January. That's the, uh, that's the hourly itself of S&P. Uh, we had some figures today. Basically, we had uh, uh, what is it? Uh, employment cons index lower, trade balance. I'm surprised that the uh, other sounds about okay. So tomorrow we have FOMC. Today is the last uh, trade of the, the last day of the month. I usually don't trade the last day of the month, but we have to do this thing. I mean, a sensible trader would wait until tomorrow uh, evening or maybe Thursday to start trading. Thursday, we also have ECB. Um, now the markets can do whatever they want. Doesn't really matter what they're going to do. Uh, again, tomorrow is a, is a big... Um, tomorrow is the main event. So in case you don't, in case you are new, this is the one minute uh, S&P, that's the one minute NASDAQ, five minutes S&P, five minute NASDAQ. I do change from hourly to five minutes sometimes. M mostly you're going to see me doing uh, NASDAQ trades because the VIX is way too low. I will repeat again, but that's my trading style. I mean, someone got to be totally different. Yeah, let's watch it on a weekly basis. So this is the VIX, uh, this is the VIX chart, yeah. Uh, as you can see, we're standing at the lows. For me, it makes no sense to trade S&P below 25, 26. I have repeated it a thousand times. Uh, S&P provides more opportunities when the VIX, the VIX measures the volatility of the S&P. Yeah. So uh, we are at multi-year low, let's say uh, VIX. This is the weekly VIX. Again, I think the NASDAQ provides more opportunities right now than the S&P. S&P is too thin, too illiquid. Uh, so if that's the case, then why don't you just trade the uh, uh, S&P? I ask myself, ah, okay, now, so from here to here, FIBOS, yeah? From here to here, that's the happen in the five minutes. Um, the first FIBO is coming at, uh, let me see my charts, 32.75, it's here. Uh, that was a previous daily high. 35.50, that's why I do have the line. 
Um, I'm looking closely at this level here, 28. So 50% FIBO and it's this break level, 28.75. Yeah, you can see it down here. Yeah, when I put the cursor, 28.75. So probably there it should should. I mean, nobody knows what's going to happen, but it should probably stop around here. Yeah. So in the S&P, I'm looking around this level, 28.50. Let's put it here as well. Uh, no, actually, I'm looking 27, 20, 28. So let's put it. Now, this is the trading pit uh, challenge, the expert challenge. I did start, uh, I have traded around uh, 10, 11 days, having uh, not trading it every day. Um, I only try to do one lot in the big contracts. I don't do two lots. Uh, just to show you how you can, with minimal risk, to uh, to achieve like the 3,000 uh, target two times. Now, to be honest, I thought I was going to pass it the first month, but I think too many things that don't happen. So, so yeah. Uh, now, I do understand that Nasdaq is too fast for uh, some people. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. All right, so let me just show you something. So that's a retracement of Nasdaq. This is the one hourly Nasdaq. Nasdaq uh, broke this level in the hourly. 82 is the level here, it raised to 82 and bounces. Um. I use these trend lines. I don't use it for to, for holds. I always use those trend lines for the retracement only. Yeah? So the retracement of this broken high connection in the hour comes 41.75. But Nasdaq is not really responsive to technical levels. It usually works on horizontal levels like a break or force break and stuff like this. Yeah. So again, uh, we are looking. What's this level here? Yeah, that looks better. All right, don't forget, we're looking around here, 28. Yeah, probably around 28. I'm going to do something in the SP. And again, it depends on the on the market. Yeah, who knows my goals? My go, my go and break it all together. Um, do you have any questions? If you have any questions, either you can use your microphone or um, you can type in the chat. I prefer the microphone.
So again, this is the first FIBO, this is the fifth person FIBO. Here I'm looking to do a long. Now, if we shoot up, or uh, if we shoot straight up, what levels do we have? Not much. There is one at 70. What's this out behind? Basically, I should do the same trend line in the SP. Because, because. Three breaks in the SP. Technical is a general uh, like we want to have been working very well this month. So yeah. And here is another level in Nasdaq. It's this level here. I understand that the first minutes are very choppy. Sometimes they do provide good opportunities, but most of the times they are very tricky. Now, I will repeat um, <clears throat> what I'm, I'm repeating in my daily webinars. The, the whole point of this is not just to see me making money. Yeah? The whole point is how I manage the difficult situations. So for example, why, when I lose money, how I try to, to retain my composure and make my money back and uh, not basically in the same day, how I I just, uh, uh, I surrender to the situation when, when I just don't like it and I don't have it anymore, or you know how the psychological part affects your trading, the rest, the rest are easy. Put a hundred different people and give them all the levels or in all the high probability levels, and they will tra trade the totally different according to their psychology. That's how it is. Right. So in the Nasdaq, I'm looking this level, and in the s and I'm looking this level at 28. Yeah, markets open. Player refreshed. In terms of figures, I think we have left consumer confidence today in Chicago PMI. Yeah, so we have Chicago PMI in uh, 18 minutes. The subscribers that have the PMI early, so be aware. You might see a move uh, three minutes prior to the re release of the figure. Uh, and then we have at the turn of the hour uh, consumer confidence. This is um, so this line in the one minute is considered good volume. In the one minute chart, um, every every day in the in the one minute chart, you have volume above ten thousand because it's the first minute. Then it usually, at at least in January, it subsides, so it falls in volume, and uh, the whole thing drops dead in the S and P. Yeah. Uh, as things stand, it is very choppy, very very unstable. Um, it can be going up like for one hour, and then one big clip or one big seller comes in and gives back everything. Like in one minute, everything is made in an hour. So. That makes it very difficult for now, yeah. So you have to be extra careful when you get sucked in in the trade, yeah. Like you have to exit very, very quickly. It's like it's failing again on this level. Okay. Okay.
It's like uh, SNP is too far away from the high. So this has a very high probability of a false break, yeah? Did exactly confirm the high, yeah? Wow. Exactly confirm the high. Always watch for where the five minute closes uh, prior to the previous level. Yeah. Is it closing above or below a certain level? Always wait for the close. That's why you have here the countdown for the five minute close. Yeah. Okay. Two ticks new high. You can watch the chart here at the one minute. You don't have to watch the ladder, the ladder. I just do, I just execute from the ladder and then I look at the chart really. So false break for now. It has to close above 17 and 25 to be considered something of a buy, but why would you want to go buy that since the SP is not really moving? Yeah. Yesterday it decoupled from the SP. So one market was going up and the other one was going down, which is normal on uh, on on. on On instances like this, okay, that's ten points. About the break, a little bit more than ten points. So yeah, I might consider scalping. My why? Why should I do anything else since the market is doing breaks and false breaks and stuff like this? If I think something has momentum to continue, I might hold it. I will see. But around twenty to thirty points, or sometimes ten, if I want to scalp, I get out of the Nasdaq. So yesterday, day one trade like this, where I made ten points, and then all my other trades were bullshit until the end, where I made forty points, and I turned it back again. But this is very. Well, let me see where was the exit. The, the exit was 30. I was very lucky, man. I was very lucky. I just click on the book when I when I when I feel it has exhausted the movie. Yeah. 30, 3025, and the high is 3125. That's lucky, man. So I'm going to head it back down, yeah. In Nasdaq, the most important thing is timing, nothing else. You have to time it. For example, I could have gone long the other the other time and uh, lost like 30 points. Yeah, you just have to time it. By the way, only crazy people trade the last day of the month and the one day prior to FOMC, yeah. Only crazy people. So my recommendation is if you were trading live money, just don't trade today, man. It makes no sense. Just wait for the tomorrow evening. After tomorrow evening, so Thursday. You don't want to trade FOMC either, I mean. You cannot go against those algos. They are too fast for you. And people think like uh, they log in here and they're going to see me trading like crazy. Trading requires massive amount of patience. Just... Mm. 
the least you can do from from this journey that you are on is at least learn. It doesn't matter if you lose money or if you fail in the challenge you are you are learning. And you are learning with a little bit of stress because this is not a hundred percent simulation. Yeah, you have put some money down, so there is some stress. That's why I like those programs at least for 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 a learning curve. And if you can make some money, then why not? Telling you the S&P is going to do some some break and it's going to go all the way straight straight down to twenty eight. So thirty five twenty five is the low, isn't it? Or thirty five fifty. It's up one. Thirty five fifty. Okay. So it's getting there, should break here. If, if this breaks, this is gonna break heavily. Yeah? So this has to break with 35.50 and go all the way straight down. Welcome, Eric. Just so you know, I'm I'm a trader. I have a trader's heart. I'm, I'm, I'm I was never really cut for chatting and speaking and everything. I'm, I'm telling you on this. I will never tell you what you're gonna hear. I'm just gonna say what I what I think from my point of view. Yeah. Yeah. Nasdaq went first. Let's see if this is gonna break further. Yeah. It's not really breaking yet. The S and P is it? Something's gonna give here. Either force break here or S and P breaks. Yeah. It's like what's break from now. 96.75 was so here was the uh, the break level, yeah. Uh, you have to be very careful now that one trade can you can go offside 20 points very easily, yeah, like now. So this looks like a first skip break. Told you something's got to give, and this didn't give false break. Now it has to go, at least the S&P has to go and break this high, unless it's, uh, it's, it's just stopping people out. Usually it fails and then goes and attack the other side. Same for S&P, and that's probably going to be the case here. Yeah? Now, it's better to buy S&P than NASDAQ here, yeah? It's the high here. It's the, every time I trade S&P, man, I'm losing. NASDAQ is breaking, yeah? What's going on? Ah, the, that's the Chicago BMI. I told you, there's three minutes. Uh, it's three minutes uh, earlier, yeah. That's why the panic, the figure is going to come in three minutes. I don't know if it's higher or lower. I cannot really judge from the uh, from the move here. Why is my squawk not working, man?
So we're just moving into two minutes till we get the MNI Chicago PMI for January. We're looking for 45 on the prior revised 45.1. It's already out, yeah, just so you know. Just uh, subscribers to the PMI. I think you paid around uh, 2,000 per month to, to get it three minutes earlier. That's that's uh, that's the only bit. So uh, the people that pay, is it unfair? It is unfair. It is unfair. Whole life is unfair. Most of the times. Very big NASDAQ, let's buy it. Break it. No. You buy it again if it breaks. Damn, that's like. Ah. Forty-four point three for the M and I Chicago PMI. Forty-four point three on an estimate of forty-five. Slightly lower. What? It's going the other side now. It's going on here, man. This could be a false break day the whole day. Yeah, this is very very choppy, man. Plus, as you can see, uh, every day I put the volumes. The volumes are crap. Opening and then usually good volume is 10,000 every minute. Yeah. And since November, it has been nearly. What am I? What is this margin on? Yeah. So with that M and I Chicago PMI reading coming in at 44.3 in January, that's signaling five consecutive months of contraction. I want to see when it breaks the high here. So every every day the same thing rains. Yeah, you just have to be lucky to get a good trade within the range. In thirty minutes, we have consumer confidence. If it's lower than expected, the consumer confidence should skyrocket to the sky, which means lower rates, the bonds are going to go up.
cari dulunya gen. Break it, are you breaking it? Nah. Come on. Let's go. I'm gonna get five points if it goes up. Are you closing up? Come on, S and P. Yeah. I'm getting it out. Makes no sense. Should have skyrocketed already. Same the same as Nasdaq, yeah. Doesn't worth the risk for me now. Let's see where it flows in five minutes. Ten seconds. Is it closing above or below? Close almost there. I don't like it, man. So we're just moving into ten minutes now, so we get the U.S. consumer confidence for January. We're looking for 109 this month on a prior 108.3. The range yeah, 109 to 112.5. Ah. No volume yet in the break. You see, in Nasdaq, I would have gotten out the order already if, if I timed it. In the S&P, uh, five points is here. I wouldn't get out before five points. Yeah, That's why I'm telling you. It's just... I don't think the S&P worth the uh, risk right now. About 45.75, okay. Did it tick? Yeah, went back to 45.75 exactly. So normally I would go in and buy the 45.75 on a five minute close above the 45.75, but this market is so bananas, it can retrace, uh, it's looking for the technical guys to get in because of the technical scene. And then it, because of the low volume, it just wipes them all out and goes to the lows. Ah, sorry, I have a cramp. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make technical sense. Let's wait for consumer confidence. And you go here. Where are we? 200. What a mess, man. Now, if consumer confidence comes, so this is the way. So this is uh, uh, the figure, so yeah. Uh, consumer confidence coming out in, uh, in, in eight minutes almost. Um, if it's higher, I mean, it's more inflationary, yeah? And uh, basically, we should go down on a higher figure. But again, whatever makes sense in all the other days, you have to understand you're trading the last day of the month. Uh, do it on your own. Do it at your own risk. Nobody trades at the last day of the month. Shall I repeat it? It makes sense. Why would anyone go in and trade prior to FMC since 
Uh, the Fed is the market right now. Yeah, everyone is waiting for the Fed decision. Why would you go on, go on and... At least the guys with big money, why would they gonna want to risk ahead of the ahead of the Fed? I mean, just wait one day. So prior to the Fed or ECB, you should not trade, and in the last day of the month, you should not trade as well. Because that's what the big boys do. And if you don't trade with the big boys, then you're trading with the market makers, and then good luck. Market makers just do that. That's, that's market makers moves. They provide chaos. They, they are, it's a constant search of stops and nothing else. They just stop people out the other direction. And that, that has frustrated many, many people. Yeah. And so many people stay on the sidelines until volume keep, uh, comes back. And volume defines everything. Again, I will say it for a millionth time. Volume, if there is no volume, it's just, again, you trade on your own risk. Yeah. People see moves, but they don't understand it's because of thin market. SP shouldn't move like this on a VIX of 19. Yeah, it's just. Five minutes for consumer confidence. Now, we'll provide you with my daily uh, uh, link for the webinar. If you want to join, it's, now it's one week free trial. And after that, it's 149 uh, per month. So the new guys that are going to join, it's only one week, not two weeks. We are trading this thing until we pass it. Yeah, I pass it. And then we might go to my live account. We'll see. I didn't want to trade my live account anyway in this uh, in this environment. So we're just moving into three minutes till we get the U.S. consumer confidence for January. We're looking for 109. We have analysts noting that U.S. confidence will benefit in January from recent reprieve in inflation, which has taken some pressure off household budgets. The latest cost, latest cost of living adjustment to Social Security payments, an increase of 8.7%, also began in January. Right. The consumer comes is expected 109 now. Yeah. A higher figure, we should go down. A lower figure, we should go up.
Vicky, one minute. One minute of the data. <clears throat> 10 seconds All right one of seven point one hundred seven point one for us consumer confidence this will go up yeah less than 109. look at the spread in nasdaq <clears throat> I've seen a revision to the prime month revised up to 109 from 108.3. Not even man, no volume is coming in. Bonds are doing nothing as well. Either the euro. Okay. Uh, you know, should we want to test the 84? Yeah. Did we lose or make on this one? Yeah. Another false break. False, uh, holds this previous level, yeah. Has to break the 35.50 here, yeah. No? <laughs> what am I trading, man? Down again, okay. Hmm, so perfect to the British sky here, yeah. This is outrageous, man. Let's see if it stops here now, yeah, or around those levels. Honestly, if you bought thirty-five fifty every time, you would be you would be better off, yeah.
Now looking further into this confidence, uh, conference board data, the US one-year consumer inflation rate expectations ticks up in January to 6.8% versus a revised 6.6% in December. So I went back to here. Yeah? Yeah, there is nothing here. Ah, here, Malaga. I missed this for a fraction of a second. Are we going on force break? Ah, force break. Yeah. Well, now it has the now it can go down. Oh, come on. Another 10 points. <clears throat> I don't wanna I don't wanna go, go for the for the direction of the move. I oh, know it's very choppy. So I bought the I, I, I stopped and then I bought it again. What was the what was the uh what was the sellers? So they stopped us out in the first try and then I got in again. Yeah, you see that's very choppy, man. So 10 points uh, point, uh, every time. And I'm telling you, it's not worth the risk. Where have we brought the account? 152 to 152. Hmm. 10 points. 10 points. Maria, what do you think? I'm not only sexy, I'm multilingual as well. To be honest, I don't know German. I spent like, I'm working with Germans for 17 years and I still can't speak German. Only when I went to the supermarket and I asked my boss, like, uh, uh, I want to buy eggs, yeah? And they were making, they were mocking me, yeah? 
So he said, uh, he, he told me, Paris, you are going to go in the kiosk and you're going to say this, this Vosimaya. So I go to the, to the cashier, yeah, I couldn't find the exit. Yeah. And I say, Vosimaya, with, you know, with, uh, with, you know, my German accent. And she just couldn't understand it. Vosimaya. And, and it just, it remained forever, Vosimaya. Just, I didn't find the eggs, by the way. They couldn't understand me. Vosimaya. Yeah, I worked many years in Switzerland. The college bullshit, man, 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 man. Are we selling the 80s? Are you stopping me? Of course you are. Oh, come on. And what that is. What did we again 200? Oh, went to the first people, yeah? Ay, ay, ay. The power of Fibos, exactly first Fibo. Exactly first Fibo. But I went too fast, I, I didn't even see it. By the way, you do see me that I'm not second guessing uh, with my exits. It's just when I'm, when I'm offside, I'm not like when it breaks, it goes, man. It just stays around the level and it goes. If you don't feel it, just get out there. Yeah? It makes, makes no sense to uh, hold the trend and go offside like uh, 30, 40 points. Yeah. Yeah, what is this man? 50 points, 50 points in Nasdaq in, in what, in two minutes? Was <laughs> it Maya? You could play the hold every time and be a millionaire. Nothing wrong with that. What did they lose on the last trades? 75 and 75. Come on, Maria, I never, I never lose money. I only lose time, never lose money. I never lose money, only time. I should have been buying the whole day, man. Yeah, I'm not playing the break again. <clears throat> For exactly first people. I mean, if you were pacing the S&P, obviously I was going to buy the 50%, not the 38%, but you see the market will stop where it won't stop, yeah? Breaks, no false break, I'm surprised.
the bonds are ticking down, man, and the bond is going down, and the euro is going slightly down. I don't know what they find in the upside. No, I get sucked in when the force breaks. Mr. Dinai. Mix uh, it has no momentum after the break. Maybe we buy the SP then. Now it goes. Those breaks, man. Kill him, my luck. Mine's full I think I'm going to stop it here. I gave you everything back, didn't I? Let's try one more time. I would look promising. I are losing money for no reason here. Must we down? Hundred dollars. Some commentary coming through from Brazil's Lula says Brazil was going through reconstruction works.
Uh, this is bananas, man. Break the upside. Nah. Nah, now it goes. Yeah. SP feels like uh, it's unable to close uh, below 50. Yeah, let's see 50. If this touch, yeah, it wasn't filled. I was unlucky. What are they doing, man? Yeah. We had the frau. Yeah, I'm going to keep it in mind. This untradeable really.
Dale, pusti. No, mal. Just go and break. All right, so I'm trading nothing. I'm trading the range here. Just, I'm, I'm just trading for your eyes. This is. I told you, I wouldn't have traded if I had the chance. You want to see some trades, no? Nothing. Just look at the five minutes here. Look at the five minutes here. Are you calling it now? Oh, stops. Fuck. I didn't get a feel here. It was too late. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. So we see the Dallas Fed Texas service sector survey coming in here. The service sector revenue index at 4.9 in January versus negative 0.6 in December. The service sector index of general business activity outlook for Texas, negative 15 in January versus negative 20.5 in December. Well, thank you, Anonymous. So my point is like, it seems like uh, it looked like it was gonna hold the 49.25 before going up, yeah. So that was the pivot level here, yeah. And once you went up one above 49.25, on those days, you will do the unexpected, yeah. So I keep on trying things. And those the, the the one that work, I try to hold them. The, the ones that don't work, I try to, to cut the losses, let's say. But that's the only trade that went. Okay, I could have bought the, uh, the you know, 
the range, but that's a bad tactic. So that would give uh, five points to the S and P. I should have finished that plus three hundred. Now, one thing, uh, if you miss the trade, yeah, if you miss the big trade and you have the right opinion, let's say, and for some reason you don't get filled, just stop trading. You're going to lose after this. Because then you're doing emotional trading, yeah? <clears throat> fifty six seventy five is a prior uh, prior level. Yeah, should have the risk fifty six twenty five really. This has to touch the forty nine fifty. I mean, not here. The bonds are going towards their lows. So this is the level for the S&P 5675 now. Look how the volume has dropped, man. So look at the 5675 yeah, for maybe for, for, for a false break.
But you know what's going on? Well, probably what's going to happen here. Yeah? It's going to do this up move. Yeah. And then in the afternoon, it's going to probably go down and take all stops here. Yeah? Uh, sorry, I was talking to myself. So the question is, does it go to 49.50 and then goes up? Or does it break all the way down? Because right now it should do 49.25 and then up technically, yeah. So let's look at 49.50, NASDAQ breaks. Not really. If I could improve anything in quant hour, yes, I could in increase the speed in this ladder and the charts they have always misprints. Yeah, these are misprints. These are not the, the real chart. This is not the real chart. Apart from that, it's user friendly. It's okay.
So in Nasdaq, uh, if you want to play the break, it's better if it, if it force breaks the one side and then you play the northward break, yeah? So you have to usually wait for a longs to be out and then you you get in, like now, yeah? <clears throat> the trace back to 61 here. But the whole point of the false break is to buy here, yeah, on the way up, and then uh, either <coughs> get out at the high of here or wait for a continuation. But Back to 61. There's some fiscal news coming out of Spain here. Spain increases minimum wage 8%. Let's try the 61s again. The zero boy man could go, it might not go. I don't know, man. Five hundred here. Missed it by two ticks. Here it is.
Buckley hides and breaks. Yeah. All right, and then now is your time for questions. Do you have any questions? Ah, today was a uh... Was a non event day. Yeah. Tomorrow with the Fed is going to be the. The moment of truth, let's say, at least for February. Rejection? No, this cannot be. The funny thing with the fifty six seventy five with the four point stop wouldn't have been stopped. Because you got to have a four point stop in the SP. What are we breaking all the way down? This is untradeable, told you. This is totally untradeable. So volume comes in, uh, people are getting stopped, and then we go down. No problem. Come on, today for fuck's sake, man. Mm. 
Yeah. I really thought this was going to go down to 49.50, but didn't do me the favor. There's a high chance breaks this level and we go all the way down. Especially if the 4950 doesn't hold in, uh, in the S&P, yeah? Because the idea is it's trapping too many buyers here. It's going nowhere. And then suddenly, boom, boom, on, on clips like this, yeah? Do, 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 and all the way down. On a market like this, that is uh, ranging. Okay. Okay. Unless this go to fifty six seventy five, ah, what am I discussing? It's... So back to the previous high, 71.50. And the turn of the hour.
Hmm. Stop there. going on basically the outlet flows above here yeah that is craziness all right gentlemen um for those of them the webinar i will see you tomorrow uh then next next tuesday i hope you liked it uh that's all for me i stop at five o'clock yeah, any questions? No? All right, then I will see you next Tuesday. Happy trading, everyone. Mm -hmm.